Hello, and welcome to the Derek Ryskowski podcast. I'm Derek Ryskowski. Today is January 5th, 2019. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my personal AmeriCorps experiences, both past and present. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the Stevenson Center at Illinois State University and their specific graduate program uh, in applied community economic development. So for starters, I'll give you a little bit of a brief background. Um, I am from Bloomington Normal, Illinois. Um, I got my bachelor's from Southern Illinois University in Edwardsville. I majored in sociology. I had a minor in health education. And um, after I graduated in 2015, I I lived at home with mom for a year and saved up some money and looked for jobs. I worked full time at an Alzheimer's home that I've been working at and continue to do so for a little over 10 years now. Um, and while I was looking for jobs in that year, I was accepted into the city year program which is an, under the AmeriCorps umbrella. It's an educational nonprofit that provides additional support in classrooms for inner city schools that serve underprivileged populations um, and helping to enhance their education and really provide added support both in and out of the classroom. Um, so I was, uh, the after school coordinator. So on top of, you know, focusing on behavior and coursework in a classroom, I also set up some clubs for kids at school and I had a film club, I had a drama club and a step club and really just uh, capitalized on the skill sets of my team of uh, seven other AmeriCorps members that were in the same school that I was. Um, because I don't have a whole lot of fancy skills like they did. So I used them and made my job a little easier. Anyway, um, so, you know, before I even, you know, got into City Year, I had heard about the Stevenson Center um, while living at home after graduation in 2015. My mom came downstairs one time with a flyer. Uh, she handed it to me. It you know, detailed the Stevenson Center's Applied Community Economic Development Program. And you know, there's the requirement that you have to serve with AmeriCorps or Peace Corps prior to admittance. And so um, at the same time, she gave me a heads up that, hey, there's a deadline to apply to City Year um, tonight. So I hopped on that that night and you know got the application in for the purpose of, well, I wanted to learn a little bit about what it's like to work in a school, but also wanted to pursue higher education at some point. I knew that, um, and this was a step in the right direction. Um, and, and of course, in, in the meantime, before I went to Kansas City, Missouri to work with City Year, I had talked with people at the Stevenson Center about the program and found out, you know, it's just a great financial package. You get the professional practice experience um, and the hands-on um, skills that you get from that and kind of exposure to the fields that you're interested in are invaluable, really. So I I saw it as something that I wanted to pursue. I, I thought it was just a great overall package deal. Um, you know, their school that I had applied to was Wash U. I got accepted, but they didn't want to give me any financial assistance. And um, there just wasn't a whole lot of support on their end. Would have been a great school, but um, I think with the Stevenson Center, you get that flexibility to choose the topics and um, the trajectory, whether it be sociology, anthropology, political science, or whatever within this broader community economic development framework, which I think really fit in with sociology very well. Um, so in, in my AmeriCorps experience, going back to that, I 
I really felt that like working with kids was very rewarding in a lot of ways, although challenging because a lot of the kids that I worked with came with a lot of baggage. Um, you know, they come from broken homes more often than not, and they you got to work with them on that and uh, really be understanding and show empathy at the same time. So this was a, a very great learning experience. I learned a lot about, you know, the bureaucracy in school systems and the broader need that needs to go into education for specific locations such as inner cities and Kansas City, Chicago, LA, all of those areas that you would see city you're in. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a need. Um, so currently I am an AmeriCorps member again through the Stevenson Center at my professional practice. I currently serve at a nonprofit called Hope Meadows, which is located in Rantoul, Illinois. Um, and what they do is they offer below market rent um, within a 22 acre neighborhood uh, consists of townhomes and apartments and um, different shared public spaces uh, that used to be homes that they gutted out and turned into uh, offices or they have a quilting center, uh, two intergenerational centers, which they have, you know, external speakers come in and do kind of uh, education seminars or introduce different programs that um, staff often bring to the table, which is one of the roles that I, I take here at Hope Meadows is I research and establish partnerships or uh, attempt to establish partnerships with external organizations. So I'd say that currently I've, you know, I've been working with, um, there's an, another organization in Rantoul called Lincoln's Challenge. And they are a military-based uh, operation where they have uh, at-risk youth who have dropped out of high school and are pursuing or want to pursue a GED, but also gain some relevant experience to be competitive in today's job market. Um, and so I've talked with people there and I've written a letter requesting a project collaboration between them and the U of I uh, Master Gardener program where they offer, you know, more or less experts on gardening and they do volunteering within certain projects in different communities in Champaign County and bringing them to Hope Meadows, the two organizations, um, to work on our community garden, which has since gone by the wayside because a lot of younger people have left Hope Meadows and largely there's an older population here who aren't able to do the kinds of labor intensive tasks that are required in maintaining, sustaining a community garden. And so using the labor of the cadets, the young teens uh, from Lincoln's Challenge and the expertise and knowledge of the U of I Master Gardener program is uh, a project that I've worked with um, uh, residents here at Hope Meadows and really bolstering that asset that exists here in the community, but it's not being utilized fully. Um, so overall, I mean, there's a lot of different things that happen on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I work with a lot of different organizations um, as SCNO is students consulting for nonprofit organizations. It's a, an undergraduate group from the U of I that comes and they work on uh, projects for nonprofits. And uh, last semester, I worked with them closely on planning the 25th anniversary of Hope Meadows. Um, I'd say that overall, the sentiment here between residents and the executive director uh, is that no one really expected that this nonprofit would have lasted this long. Um, I think initially it was an experiment to see, you know, how can we motivate people to do volunteering and to work with one another in a neighborhood support structure, um, intergenerational at that you know, working with seniors and often these days, not a lot of people 
are exposed to seniors unless they are in the field or they, you know, they regularly see their grandparents. Um, and so that, you know, it was a unique idea. It's innovative and involving, you know, people that are retired in a way that's both meaningful with um, what they used to do was working with foster care families and they uh, came to the community and that was the main focus for the volunteering program. Hope Meadows has since uh, discontinued its license with DCFS, which has caused a lot of issues financially, which is why they brought me in. Uh, there's not a lot of staff on hand right now currently because they just can't afford it. So my being here is to really enhance programming. Um, and I'm using what I learned in qualitative research methods in the classroom setting at ISU to really establish an effective approach toward uh, bolstering and making the voices of the community heard in transition. Because um, the mission right now is ultimately to sustain an intergenerational community uh, within a neighborhood support structure. And uh, they're working on enhancing that to make it a little more specific and uh, effective. And while we're reevaluating what the mission should be, um, I'm using my capstone opportunity to include the voices of the community, which is still yet to happen. I'm getting the proposal turned in here shortly, but that's just one of the things. Um, and within that proposal, a lot of different aspects of the classroom has been included in the proposal, in the capstone. Um, uh, in community development class, which we took in the fall, it was a course on just more the theoretical uh, descriptions of what community is, what is community development. And uh, that's been helpful because I did a paper on uh, rural, pop rural elderly populations and their disparities. And so that's helped to kind of contextualize the different kinds of services I could pursue um, with within the current work that I'm doing. Um, you know, social theory in the fall we took with uh, Dr. Brown, if you have him, he's great. Um, we, we learned a lot about extensively <laughs> a lot of, of uh, different theoretical insights from you know, a history, historical uh, line of social theorists. And um, so like Emil Durkheim, for instance, he talked about solidarity and it's real, a real important aspect of what Hope Meadows is, is, you know, you know, what kind of solidarity exists within the community to support one another, how integrated are neighbors to neighbors, how integrated are neighbors to staff and you know, how is the balance of meaningful roles extend to one another? And that's very relevant. If you ever interested, look into um, mechanical solidarity versus organic solidarity. Um, and within that also, I was able to take a seminar in gerontology, which really focused on identity and work and how that kind of transfers over into retirement and really this focus on, on life course uh, perspective, which really just encompasses, you know, individually subjective experiences and upbringings that culminate and develop into retirement. Uh, so it's been real interesting and a lot of theoretical explorations of age integrated society versus an age segregated society, which the age integrated really implies that it doesn't matter what age you are. Um, you can move in and out of, you know, education, work, and leisure, retirement. Um, whereas age segregated is more just like, you know, you go to college and you're probably between the ages of 18 and 21. Um, but, you know, there's, there's issues with that. I won't get into because I'm running out of time. Um, but, you know, overall, the coursework has been very helpful and very relevant to uh, my capstone and the work that I do here. Um, 
in the day-to-day -day base is it's very non-typical and uh, I never expect to have the same thing happen uh, day in day out so it's real interesting being here often my own role as a student and staff and resident because I live here uh, at the same time it's kind of a part of the deal and I, I get a first hand perspective and I am exposed to a lot of different dynamics which I'm able to take some field notes on and incorporate into my capstone uh, and doing that effectively has come from the classroom so yep overall it's been productive um, more or less it's getting there I still have uh, to collect data and analyze and present my capstone um, but you know, overall, I think it's going to come out well, and eventually um, I'd like to stay within community-based services, and that's what Hope Meadows does in working with elderly populations and beyond that. Um, but, you know, working at an assisted living for a while, I've been, I've been discouraged by that approach, and I know in the research you know, the up and coming baby boomers entering retirement don't want to go into institutionalized living. And so being here at Hope Meadows is a window in to an alternative to that and providing community based care. So thanks for listening. That's all I have. Uh, and uh, see you later.